Welcome to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. As always, thanks for joining us this week. Now, I hope as you listen to the show that you feel my passion about helping you on your journey of change and whatever that means to you. And I know change can be scary. It could be uh, fearful. It could stop us in our tracks. So to help you with your journey, I have a free gift for you. So if you go to my website and you click on the link for my free communication style assessment, you will get two reports. You will get a superpower, your natural communication superpower, how you are being perceived in the world. The flip side, you will also get a, your low a score, you'll get a report for that, which is oftentimes our blind spot. And again, that could be even more important than your superpowers. Um, once we shine a light on it, you can't unsee it. So hopefully that helps you on your journey. Go to WhitmanAssos.com slash CSA. Again, my gift to you. Now, my motivational quote today is by Jason Goldberg. And Jason says, emotional awareness is necessary so you can properly convey your thoughts and feelings to the other person. You know, through the years, I've been asked, what have I attributed to my successful both corporate and now my business career? And I have to be honest, for me, the answer is super simple. It has always been about the client journey experience, and it has always been about creating that safe environment for my clients. Um, so what did that mean for me? I knew I had to get really, really good at developing my communication skills. So about 35 years ago, it's probably about 35 years ago, I was trained in a behavioral model called DISC. Now, DISC has been around since the early 1900s, and I became enamored with the, the DISC model and the tool as it relates to communication. So what's the importance of the story? Well, I have been using that behavioral model during my entire career and at the start of my business. Um, about five years ago, a, a colleague and I felt that we needed to create our own model thus the free gift that I, I shared with you on the onset. So communication is at the core of connecting or not connecting with people. So we always want to shine our light and put our best, best foot forward. Um, now, whether you're selling a product, service, or an idea, we all need to gain buy-in, buy-in from our clients. Um, and we do this best when we show up fully in our own energy. Now, learning to use um, effective communication helps us differentiate what we have to offer and really becomes a game changer for us, but also for our clients. So my amazing guest today is my good friend, Lisa Dad. Now, Lisa spent 15 years in the competitive industry of corporate healthcare, <clears throat> mastering strategic sales, marketing, and management skills from the world's largest pharmaceutical company. Now, in, in addition to the success climbing the corporate ladder, um, offered. There was a deep sense in, um, it was a great, I can't talk today, guys. There was a deep sense. Her greatest potential was yet to be realized. It took eight years as an independent consultant and an intense training and leadership development and social emotional learning, very important to uncover the innate way that we access uh, potential. Now, leveraging a diagnostic tool called soul language, Lisa now works with innovative leaders to integrate an awareness of who they are at the core into the way they do business. Um, so please help me welcome my amazing guest, Lisa, to the show. So Lisa, thanks for being on and taking the time out of your day. I know you're busy. Absolutely. Thanks, Connie. It's great to be here. Yeah. So, you know, the communication, kind of important. Um, and I was giggling that, you know, you came up through the pharmaceutical, I came up through the financial um, sales in those two industries, I think specifically are not for the faint of heart. Um, it's not an easy journey. So I, I when I read your bio, I, I kind of giggled that you're like, come on, there's got to be more to this. And clearly, see, you pivoted into being in business for yourself as well. So to me, that just makes sense. And I think that's why you and I connected so well right out of the gate when we first met uh, through a networking event. So tell yeah. everybody, how did you just get into this work, you know, this sold language work with business? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's it, it, interesting that you were saying about how hard the industry is in, in pharmaceuticals and finance. Um, I really didn't mean to get back into sales. I kind of fell, fell back into sales over my entrepreneurial journey, um, which started with me just wanting to find more joy and fun and purpose in my life. You know, I yeah. got to this point in my career. I was, I, you know, I had all the success. I was suppo supposed to make me happy and I wasn't. And so I went off on this journey early on in that sales days. 
I really had a trouble feeling like I could do sales the way they were training me to do sales. <laughs> and I hear you. Yeah, and I always seemed to do better when I threw the rule book out um, and actually just kind of tried to connect with the person in front of me. And so I, I guess that that aha probably didn't even come to me till m- much, much later. Um, but, you know, at years and years of the journey and there's a big piece in the middle, but I started to... Um, you know, the journey I went on was to learn more about myself, what was going to bring me joy, what was actually going to feel good to me. And, you know, full circle now, almost, you know, nine and a half years later, um, I'm the work that I do now with people is getting them to come from a place that feels really good and feels really joyful and feels really natural. So initially, I was just looking for it from a a job or career or life perspective. And now I'm like, Oh, wait a second, this is actually a business strategy. Yep. And, and, you know, the aha moments, it's funny. And I get what you're saying. I remember my first day, um, they had to be a script and the phone book. Okay. This was in the eighties. So we didn't have computers for my young folks listening. Uh, yes, we did it old school. The dinosaurs were still Roman when I started in sales. Right. And I remember I had left a very good job with a paycheck Lisa, same thing. And then I'm like full commission. Thank goodness. I was still living at home. I was a kid. Right. And I remember that first night thinking, this is the worst thing that I could ever have done because going through their script was so opposite of how I felt and spoke and and connected with people energetically. And so it was, I was awkward. So I had zero success on the phone because people felt that awkwardness. And I just, I used their template, but I, I did not use a script. I would get on and go, Hey, how you doing? Because that's how I spoke. And my, you know, my sales uh, uh, exponentially went up. Same thing. It was intuitive, not taught. And that sounds like the same thing with you. It was a very intuitive way of, wait a minute, these rules, they, they're, they they do not jive with my, with me and my, my inner soul, right? That's really what we're talking about. Yeah. I've been giving ourselves permission to be that, but I, you yeah. know, also starts with some some awareness, right? And I know you just talked about the, the disc tool that you love to use. Um, I use my soul language tool, but for me, all the tools, any of the tools, you don't use them all, it's confusing, but the more we can get radically aware of who we are, the more we can know what that is. I think sometimes we've been taught to um, show up a certain way or we're afraid if we don't do something a certain way or what does somebody really want from us? It puts all these little layers over us and we we, we forget who we are. So just saying to someone, you know, just be you in a sales call, it's like, okay, (laughs) but not the you that that is trying to please people and not the you that's afraid you won't make a sale. You know, it's not quite as clear for for people that maybe aren't quite as uh, easy with gift, gift of the gab, I always call it for, for yes. sales people, right? Yes. Connie, you and I are like, ah, we can kind of talk to anybody, but yes. those that are listening that are like, I don't have that skill set. What is intuitive? What is my intuitive way of connecting with people? Not everybody knows that automatically. Sometimes it takes a little work. You know, it's funny. I, I do some volunteer with, uh, it's called the teen think tank. Um, I think they're, uh, they have students, uh, very high potential students, from the US and Canada, and they run it uh, two or three times a year where they start to work on different public policies, right? To teach these kids that are in high school how to find their voice and how to look at things and work in a collaborative way, right? That we can change the world because there are future leaders. So I was asked, I I know uh, the organizers of this, the owners of the program. And so I go and I do my communication, my CSA, my communication style assessment. And it's adorable because these kids then connect with me on LinkedIn, but then they'll respond and they'll share stories about how they used it with their family, how they used it at school with teachers, how they're using it with their cohorts within this collaborative effort that they're doing to change public policy, right? Or to explore public policy. And I'm touched every time because they're so grateful to learn this skill at such a young level, you know, young age. I wish we had that when, when we were younger, just things are so much more easily available because of the internet. So yeah, this, these are important skills that we're talking about today. I want, do me a favor and just to ground the conversation for everybody listening, what is soul sales and why do you think it's important now? If you could define it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Well, soul sales to me is speaking soul to soul, right? It's really creating um, an environment where I always say it requires that you care about how your prospects experiences as much as your own. They require us to want to serve a bigger mission, 
um, yes. be more um, connected to the mission than we are to any one particular sales. Yes. Um, it's about understanding our own soul language and coming from that place. Um, it's, it's really a way to, to connect. Um, yeah. I mean, so to me, it's, I, I also, the biggest thing with soul, with soul sales for me is that I take people's natural ways of being natural energy and natural approach that they do organically in every other area of their life and teach them how to do that more effectively in a sales situation. Yes. Whereas most sales training take a sales approach and teach everybody the same approach. That's right. So we start first with your natural approach <clears throat> train you in the situations. It exactly. goes back to what you said that, you know, you throw, you did better when you threw out the rule book, right? It's the same thing because, you know, the rule book, the training, you know, even my seven step process leads, but I, I tell my, my clients and in my programs and even in my corporate clients, you are the secret sauce. My seven steps aren't the secret sauce, right? It's how you, you understand the flow for me, the set, the seven steps is the flow of the conversation. You have to have, you can't go from the beginning to the end, to the middle. Most clients are going to be like, what the heck are they talking about? So my seven steps is nothing more than an organized flow that you need to take the brain, the client's brain through this communication process, but you're the secret sauce, right? So it's your soul. It's your energy. It's how you show up. It's how you connect with people naturally. That's your gift. Why would I tell you, you have to be like me. That's so counterintuitive because I can't be like you, Lise. You can't be like me yet. We're both very successful in sales. So the secret sauce isn't the process, the secret sauce. And I love how you, you, you phrase it. It's, it's our soul, our soul sales vibration, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's even that process is going to look different for, for different so people yes. language. So some things that will work really effectively for other individuals, someone who has artisan energy is going to sound very different than someone who has, you know, warrior energy, um, so, who someone has, you know, my energy, it's going to come across very differently. So it's, it is hard to give people steps and even, even a logical order that feels logical to you and me may not, will not, will not be logical to other people. Um, it's, depending on exactly what their soul language is, is saying to them. So uh, even absolutely. that idea of what's logical, um, we all view that through a different lens. Absolutely. And, and it's so funny because, uh, and I say this too, to my clients and I know you do too, it's not right or wrong, good or bad. It mm -hmm. is right. You are who you are. Let's leverage that. That's why these models are fabulous because it's a tangible tool for people to bite into and say, Oh, I understand the concept. Now I can start to apply it in my real life, right? So I, I just, I love all of this stuff. I think it's fascinating. Can well, you go through, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just want to make a point about that you are who you are part two, because a lot of times they talk about radical self-awareness and people will say, and even they'll hear you and I say, you know, just be you. And they think, oh, just be authentic. And I, and it's so interesting because in soul language, there, it's, it's a spectrum of energy. It's not one thing or the other. You know, a lot of the behavioral tools have a little bit more polarity in them. Yes. But this idea that instead of just saying, and this is where the emotional intelligence part comes in, it might say, um, so let, let's use the artisan, for example. The artisan's mindset is naturally skeptical. So someone could say, well, I'm just skeptical. That's just who I am. Or they can start to learn about how does that skepticism serve them and not serve them. And it's not about changing being skeptical. It's about leveraging it in a way that's actually productive and feels good for other people. Because when an artisan is using skepticism in a really positive sense on the positive pole, it, it's, it's very, very productive in investigating and, and, and bringing up uh, features and questions that other people wouldn't think of. Yeah, it's funny because, um, you know, when, and I know you do this with your leaders too, when I work with, um, you know, executives or team leaders of sales, whatever it is, and we talk about, right, I use my CSA, you use the soul language, but the concepts are the same um, because, I, and I, when they're hiring, I say, be careful. You don't want to hire people just like you all the time because you just <laughs> said something really smart, right? If I don't, like, I do not see detail. I'm, you know, 50,000 feet up in the air looking at the big picture all the time. So I need someone to say, whoa, 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 great idea. Here's the flaw. Like, here's the flaw in the plan. You're missing this, this, and this. I need that. So as leaders, you know, we're, we're talking the soul language. You really want a combination of all, because then what happens is you minimize 
any blind spots because you have each style coming to the table with, well, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And that's part of leveraging, right? They're, they're beautiful natural strengths that all of us don't have because we're so different and so unique. Absolutely. Can you- There's seven different archetypes in the soul language. And some people might be like, ooh, I want to be a sage or ooh, I want to be a king. And I am always starting to say, look, we need absolutely all of them. None of them are better or worse than the other. That's right. Um, and I, I agree that with the team, you do want a blend of those and you want that team to be even radically self-aware of their own energy because that's right because um well we use artisan again because i was picking on the artist earlier but the artist's energy can be very destructive they're very constructive because they're the creative innovators the great inventors of our time but the energy when they're not really feeling solid grounded part of the team all of that um gets a little bit destructive so it's like i want this artist on my team but right now it feels like they're saying no to everything that we need to <laughs> Right. So it can, that's when you're like, well, wait a second, you know, uh, Connie and Lisa said, hire a bunch of people. We've got them around the table, but for some reason, we're not, we're not gelling. Yeah. That's where that radical self-awareness comes from and like le- leaning into your own energy. I think that we're getting better at that humans because it's, it, there's so much more, more awareness of these models. So language, right. Our inner voice authenticity is, is such a big word, but all of it is very available. So I find that people, when you make a recommendation or they take, you know, my CSA or your soul language, they're like, yes. Oh my gosh. That's so much like me. Yes. I have that blind spot. So I think people are so much more opening and curious about, well, what does that mean? And how do I apply it? Which makes it fun for you and I, because we can now take the model and lift it off the page with them in real life. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, and what's really big for me is that part of the yes that you just said. So I always say, you know, the soul language is said, if anybody just wants to know what their archetype is, then don't bother it because just, I, I'm not about labels and identity. I don't want to add a false identity to someone. I don't want to say Love you're it. a warrior and you have to be like this, but that whole idea of you saying someone will go, yes, that's so me to me, the soul language helps me activate a truth within them. Yes. And so I always say to them, look, the power is with you, not with the tool. So when we go through the report, we start talking about how does this show up in your life? And you go, oh, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. And so we go like, okay, well, why is that showing up? It's probably a false identity you grab from somewhere else. But as soon as I hear them go, oh, yes, that feels so good, Lisa. I'm like, okay, I got, we've got it now. And it's That's not because the tool told me we've got it. It's because it activated a, a knowing that was there all along just yeah. maybe hidden by all the society, societal experiences and viewpoints and judgments and all the things that we, yeah, we are onions <laughs> as we peel back one layer. It's like, Oh crap. There's another one that I have to navigate. Right. Do me a favor. Can you go through each of the seven archetypes and, and give, you know, well, you do, you know what you do. So yeah. Give the seven because I think guys, yeah. Yeah, and everybody get a pen and paper out. <laughs> well, I'll give you the, the basic role slash essence of the archetypes, but there's seven different aspects in it. So you won't just have one. Like my dominant energy is king energy. Um, and the king energy is all about leadership. So like my whole life, I've been told that you're, I'm a natural born leader. Every time I'm in scenarios, even if I don't want to lead and I'm sitting back and being quiet for some reason. So Lisa, what, why don't you take us through this? Or Lisa, why don't you? I, I, I get pulled into it. So those listeners that are going, oh my gosh, that's totally me. I don't really always even want to be the leader, but for some reason, even if I know the least amount in the room, someone ends up help, making me the leader. So King energy is all about leadership, but I have different energy for like, I have the goal of the artist and I have the approach of the priest and I have, so there's different aspects that you'll have in your soul language. So as I'm talking and people are going, Ooh, I think that's me. We can, we have a blend. You, you're not only really coming from one energy, like our souls like to play and learn lessons from other energies. Um, so I, I think that the King's pretty clear for, for most people. It's easy for me to describe because it's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, helper energy, the helper energy or the server energy, the helpers are the true nurturers and servers of the world. They're often the people behind the scenes making everything work, right? Kings need servers around them or helpers around them because they're the ones that really feel called. Uh, they really feel um, like they're serving their purpose when they're serving someone else's. Yeah. It's uh, those people that are just like, yeah, I'm always, I'm a, sometimes I'm often behind the scenes, but I'm serving, always serving others. And it feels really good. Now, lots of people say to me, oh, Lisa, but I love to serve, but say king energy, king serve by leading, helpers serve by serving, really support, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Supportive, really supportive. Um, your artists, we've talked about artists are the true innovators and creatives. They can't not do something original. Often in the, in, in, they're not always in doing it in groups. It's often alone. And it's not just artistic, like um, drawing. It's engineers, the innovators of the, the world. They can't, they break down structures so they can build the new things. They see what's wrong with everything and they want to build something completely different. That's your artists. Um, so a lot of creative energy. Um, your warriors are all about action. You say, you can use the word fighting, but some people don't like the word fighting because it seems negative, but fighting energy from a warrior is really productive. They get things done. If we didn't have a bunch of warriors in the world, nothing would get done. They want to be in action and they want to conquer. So salespeople, for example, the traditional salespeople that were doing the same thing day after day after day after day, and you see that energy and they love it and they're so successful at it. And I'm looking at it going, I could do it for a week or two, but then I'm bored. But the, the warrior energy is just persistent and they're always conquering. So that's a warrior energy. Scholar energy is all about um, teaching, learning, and bringing structure to knowledge. And so your, your, your scholars out there are the ones that have this like insatiable thirst for learning. So, so some of you out there will say, well, I really like to learn, but I also really like to be active. And it's hard to understand, but the, the scholars just can't not learn. They're the ones that will go learn every piece of information out there just for the sake of learning. It feels good. Yeah. Whereas like my energy as a king, kings are about mastery. I just go out, I get what I need and I come back and I apply it. I don't need to learn the rest. I'm a little bit lazy that way. <laughs> right? Me too. And I like to delegate. <laughs> go figure yeah. that out for me, please. <laughs> yeah, somebody else go learn that. But the scholars, just, they actually get energized by that. It, it yeah. like fatigues me, but the, they want to learn everything, every paper, right. everything written. Yeah. Um, sages are the great communicators. You'll often find them on a stage, but not necessarily, but speakers and actors and things. Soul language is not really related to a job, um, but it's the energy around the idea that sages can't not communicate. They love to have an echo. So they're always, so they express the way an artist expresses, but usually it's with and through others. So there's, that's why sages you'll find in groups, communicating with other building community, things like that. Um, whereas an artist would be fine creating in their own house, not talking to anybody. Sages want people around them to communicate with. So that's how they, they have to express. So usually a lot of guidance and wisdom in it, but just you find sages out there expressing. And then you've got the priest energy. And I should say priest, priestess. So anybody's out there who's really sensitive to the, the gender description, I don't want to be um, exclusive of anybody. Um, the energy is not gender related at all. So nope. it's, it's queen resonates better than king use queen it really is not it is not about masculine and feminine in there it's not like if to be king energy you have to be masculine um and so priest or priestess energy um they're the real compassionate ones the consoling um, coaches it works a lot for coaches because um priest energy can create these beautiful safe spaces that people feel heard and understood it's like they feel seen, they feel heard. It's like those people out there that are listening, if you're that friend in the friend group who everybody bears their soul to, it seems like they're always coming to you with their problems to, to, to feel heard and seen. That's kind of priestess energy. Um, you know, in, and the blending is, so you can have that king energy and you're kind of secondary. I'm just going to say secondary. I don't know what the right terminology is in this framework, but <clears throat> so let's say you're secondary <clears throat> excuse me, might be the priestess or priest. And then you can have the king or queen with the warrior as kind of the, the sub-level, um, if you will. So, you know, that, that's another thing um, I love about models like this is the clarity of the distinction. And I, I loved how you said, do not label yourself. We should never label ourselves. No these, are in, right, these are informational pieces of intel for us to say, hmm, I just learned something else about myself. Now, how do I use it? How do I leverage it to make me better, stronger, happier, more joyous, what, whatever, right? Whatever it is that I'm seeking on my journey. Um, so I, I love how you broke those seven down. Go ahead. Talk about the combinations for me. The combinations are depending on where those energies show up in the different aspects. So yes. as I mentioned, so I have king energy, which is about leadership. And the approach of the king, I use approach. So for us with sales and communications, approach is usually a big one. So I do have the approach of the king because that's my dominant energy, which is very assertive. I don't use 50 words when two will do. And I don't 
go around the bush, I go straight to it. Like, you know, assertion, assertiveness. But my dominant approach is actually that of the priest, which is all about passion. The yes. priest is the ones that you're just like, oh my gosh, they must be a born salesperson because they're, they're, they're talking about something with such passion. So it doesn't mean that every, every other archetype doesn't have passion, but the way in which a pre, someone with a lot, the approach of the priest would sell would be a very passionate way. So let me give you an example of this for sales. I think it'll be clarifying. So the priest energy is very um, inspirational and passionate. So it'd be like, I, this option is going to be so beautiful for you. I can totally see how it's going to serve you in this way. Oh, it's, it's just, there's so much richness that you can get out of this. Scholar approach is very um, neutral. And it's very, um, they're based on observations. And so a scholar is more apt to say, well, if you're looking for this, there's option A. And if you're looking for this, there's option B. Given what you're saying, I think you're looking for option A, but here are the two options. They don't have the same um, passion, passionate opinion on things. They're very like A and B, you know? And I kind of, I thought it would go A, but we tested it and it's B. So like a scholar approach is a little bit more neutral in that. So once you start to understand approaches, you can lean into that. If, if, if you're saying, well, who's the better salesperson? Well, they can both be great. If I'm going to the Apple store to buy a computer and I get a scholar in front of me, the scholar saying, look, we got five options. This one has these, th 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 they got all the information. And I'm just like, oh, that guy knows what he's talking about. That's right. And I may want to buy from him because I think he's given me lots of information and I don't feel like he's swayed one way or the other. But I also might go one day to buy an iPad and I've got a priest energy in front of me. He's like, oh, you love to watch videos. Oh my gosh, I have to show you the newest iPad because it's got the best colors and the best speed and it's so amazing. And if you're into entertainment, this is the one. But you see the energy is very different. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong. It's like, yeah, it's how you use that energy. Do you teach, um, when you teach this, the soul language for business or, and the archetypes, do you, do you like for me, um, I, I call it learned behavior. Okay. So let me describe it. And then you, I, I, I know you do this. So it's learned behavior, meaning I am passionate depending on who's in front of me. I could be the priestess, like you just said, where it's, you, there's two options. The way I see it, there's two options for you, but that's how the person needs to be fed the information for them to comprehend what I'm putting down, right? There are some where the enthusiasm, the passion, the way you just said, oh my God, I'm so excited. This is perfect for you based on a conversation. So some people need to hear it from that energetic perspective. So again, you and I have been doing this a long time. So wow. I, I think you and I do it intuitively just because we've been doing this a long time and we've applied all these tools throughout our, our careers. So do you, do you teach I, that I, as a, you yeah, get what no, I'm I, saying? I do. And I think a little differently on that. I think that you and I naturally have soul languages that lend to the way sales is done in society normally. So what you and I think is natural and intuitive is actually we're just inclined to actually to fit into those models a little better than some people. So I haven't done your soul language, so I don't know that for sure, but the ability to do that. Um, the other thing I want to um, clarify different with the soul language is it's not behavior based. So a lot of the archetypical programs that we do in business, including DISC, are based on behaviors. Oh. The soul language um, difference is that it's based on the energy. So what I do is I ground people in the energy of their own. And then when we're talking about buyers, the, 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 the aspect that works really well with buyers in terms of a sales scenario is what their mindset is. So if I have the approach of the priest and I am sitting and I have somebody in front of me whose mindset is that of, well, the artist, let's do the one we already know, which is skepticism. So it's not that I want to change my approach to, to match that person. It's that if I'm really aware of my approach, I can still use it. And I'm open to recognizing, oh, the person in front of me is really skeptical. I'm still going to use my approach of passion. And it may, it may look different if someone was watching it, but the energy is still actually the same. But now what might come across is that I'm really passionate about answering the questions that the skeptical person has in front of me. Like I, I'm, I really want to get the right choice for you. And so I can hear a little bit of skepticism and what, what answer would make you feel a lot better about this. Right. So I'm still using my own approach. That's still, that's still a priestly approach about how do you feel? And I'm really passionate about it, but I'm recognizing what the person in front of me needs. So I want to make really sure, like I'm really big on the fact that I don't want 
I don't want to create chameleons. It's not to say we can't style flex, but I love to bring people into their own comfort zone. I know everybody says go out of your comfort zone. I get them in the comfort zone and to say, look, you are the priestly enth enthusiasm. Now, here's the, the thing about the priestly enthusiasm. Coming from the negative side, it gets overzealous, over fanatical and obsessive. Mm. If it comes across as way too much and way too exciting and way too big for people, the person is usually coming from their own fear and overwhelm. Absolutely. So their, their, their superpower becomes their kryptonite. That's right. So it's more about grounding someone in where they're coming from. And then because passion doesn't have to be loud and obnoxious. It can be really heartfelt. I mean, remember, priestess energy is consoling. It's I see you, I hear you, I get you. So even, even that energy will come through the approach, right? And so it can still feel really good no matter which archetype's in front of you. But it's about awareness. And you, you, you've already mentioned that. This is about awareness. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know what? This is another thing too. I've seen you know, through my, my 20 years of business and 40 years in sales, um, when I teach, right, and, and some of my clients in the past have used DISC, for example, people will come in and say, oh, I'm definitely, and they tell me, and I think within seconds, I can tell because I've been doing this so long. No, no, you're not. And I go, okay, well, let's, let's get, when we get to that content, let's peel back your onion and evaluate why you see it that way after I describe each of the styles, right, for, for example. So sometimes people want to be and Absolutely. say, oh, yes, yes, I'm a warrior. Oh, yes, yes, I'm a priestess or a priest. Yes, 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 I'm the king or queen because they're aspiring to that. And so the first thing is own who you are. The good, no good, not good or bad, right or wrong. It just, you are who you are, right? You are wiring our soul. They've, our soul came here and chose this lifetime for a reason, right? So what oh. is your soul trying to tell you? Um, business, sales, whatever it is, and then understanding it and not pushing it away because by pushing yeah. it away, I think that creates disharmony within ourselves and, and takes sucks the joy out of everything. What's really cool about this, first of all, is that they layer. So, you yeah. know, the, I've got, I have colleagues and friends that use disc and I've been run through disc several times. Of course, corporate, you get through disc and Briggs and all yeah, of them, all of them, right. Um, they layer. So for me, someone might be a DI in disc. But I know if a warrior in a DI will show up different than a priestess in a, a DI because yes. the, the DI is behavioral based and can change based on experience right. and all of those things, um, training, all the things and style flexing. Um, but the core energy doesn't. The other piece is, is that when we do the soul language, someone might initially say, ooh, I think I want to be a king. I, I expect to see that more, but I actually see it way less than I thought when I first started doing this work. Because once we go into the soul language, people go, Ah, uh, there's like a, there's like a, oh, it feels so good. And, and I, honestly, there's lots of people. I was like, oh, I think she thinks she's a sage. And then um, I have a client specifically. She thought she was very sagey. And then we did her, her work and she, she came up warrior. And she's like, I really didn't expect this. I'm like, okay, no problem. Let's, it could be wrong. I always do, 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 do. Of the course. We go into the work. She's like, I love this. I love, of course you love being a warrior because you are. That's like, right. You, if you weren't, you wouldn't. And it would feel like, oh, I kind of wanted to be a sage. But actually, the truth is, someone's energy who really is warrior actually doesn't want to be a sage. They really, at the core, they don't. So when we do the work, they, they can understand why. And they start to see the power and the beauty in the permission of taking off the masks and the cloaks. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this feels so great. You know? Yeah. Again, it's sharing information, right, that they can... Um reflect upon the self it goes back to the self-awareness and i think as soon as they land on their truth it's like oh yes that's why this makes so much sense and that brings the joy and the alignment and all those things that we need to do it this is powerful and you know energetically i mean you know you've, you've seen me speak but you know we have the conscious conversation and we have the unconscious conversation there's always an energy exchange and not just in sales conversations or with clients it's with everybody in our lives so these type of tools i love because it it, it lets us explore 
ourselves in in a just a really nice dip, deep deep rich way and it just makes us i think more harmonious with the people in our lives right the more i know about me the more i can i can show compassion the more i stop judging the more i look at a situation from all factors right all of those things i think it, it humbles us so i i just love this type of dynamic uh tool uh, because I just think it helps us with self, right? Forget about external. It helps us with self and change starts within. So I love it. We're out of time. Um, Lisa, go ahead. You want to say one, I more thing? one last thing is that when we show up fully as who we are, it feels so good energetically for others. It gives them permission to show up in that as well. So I think that's the other piece of it at a deeper, like at the energy yeah. is like, yeah. it's not about thinking about this. It's like, can I just really be it? Can I embody it? in a way that also makes room for someone else to embody it. That's soul to soul sales, business, life, relationship, conversation. Yeah. How do we meet people? I do it first by fully showing up as me. Yeah. I love that. And that's a great way to end the show, right? By me being me, it allows other people to find the space for them to be them, right? It's comfortable. It's safe, right? It's creating that safe environment. I love it. Great way to end the show. Um, everyone, if you're interested, please go to Lisa's website. It's Lisa dad, D A D D.com. Email her directly. Lisa at Lisa dad.com and your free gift. Yes. If someone is interested in hearing more about their own soul language, um, I will jump on a quick 15 minute call with you and I can give you a little bit of more pointers to connect you in the right direction. Um, and to see if you want to do this. I mean, it's not for everyone. As we said, it's not, this isn't about giving you a label. This isn't about a label, but if you feel a calling to dive deeper, that will make sense. I love it. I love it. And, and I will put uh, Lisa's calendar link again. We're trying to keep it simple for you. So they click, go sign up and um, connect with Lisa that way. So uh, again, you have her website, lisadad.com, email lisa at lisadad.com. And I will put the calendar link. It's just too much gibberish for me to do over the uh, sound wave. So that will be posted for you as well. Um, Lisa, thanks so much for being on. Uh, love this topic. I just love this topic. Um, great job explaining it. And um, the clarity of the seven languages. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Connie. And I hope you will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover together, no matter where you on where you are on this journey of change. I truly hope that my guests and I provide a tip, a tool, an idea, a thought, something that inspires you to take a step, whatever that step is for you. Um, again, the information is wonderful. If you do nothing with it, then what happens? It's great information. So please take Lisa up on her offer, start to investigate what soul language means and business, all of the things, but investigate, use it in your life. And that's when the magic starts happening. It's all about the application. So again, I hope Lisa and I gave some tips, ideas, and stories that help you move the needle on as you navigate change in your life. Um, thank you again for uh, joining Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.net. I truly wish you all an inspired uh, week filled with change that you choose. Hopefully it's not just thrust upon you. Um, and hopefully you move your needle to joy and happiness and thriving, whether it's career or business. That's what I wish for you. I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Till next time. <laughs>